Welcome to this video where we are taking a look at the major update that was released on the 3rd of August 2019 if you're watching this in the future. This update consists of two parts. The first part it relates to the Dvidiat Impera 1.25 update which relates to the main core mod module of the of the mod and then there's the second part is the Alexander scenario campaign which has also been released this is a sub mod now to try and get through all this in a way that's not going to send you guys completely to sleep and so it makes a bit of sense what I'm going to do is a brief introduction and then I'm going to split the video into three parts the, th the three part and the three parts will consist of me going through the quite fairly extensive patch notes now I'm not going to go through these patch notes in absolutely microscopic detail as I can imagine you guys would probably give up after the first 15 minutes and go to sleep what I, would, what I will do though is I will go through at a very top level talk about what I can my feelings about it and what what's involved in the the actual update and then there will be a link in the video description that will take you to this page so if any of you guys want to really look in the detail especially some of the preview links which I will take a quick look at but if you really want to get in and take a look at the new the new units and visuals because this is a key element of this update and i think it's really going to bring something really key and important to the game you'll be able to do it yourself the second the second part of the video will be a little bit of a jump round where i'm going to kind of sh try and show you things within the campaign that i can show you without getting into playing extensive campaigns and then in the third part what i want to do is show you the new scenario sub mod for campaign for alexander I'm not going to play very much. I just want to show you what it looks like, where the starting position is, and just give you a, a feeling for what is actually going on in that area there. So I think that's enough of the overview. As I say, there will be timestamps for any of you guys who want to jump forward to a specific part of the video. Before I get into reading the patch notes, I just want to have a little bit of a brief introduction. I have loaded my roam campaign with the the new update and I played a little bit just as a test it seems to be okay I haven't lost any money I don't see any instability with it because if you actually look at the update Rome is is not affected now what I can't say is that if any of you guys are playing one of the factions that is being given new rosters that you may not have some adverse effects but beyond that I would say that the any existing campaign which will be stable under this new update and what i will say is that i'm a little bit upset with dresden and the team over this because quite literally yesterday i sat down and i block recorded my rome campaign and my city skylands campaign in preparation for no man's sky so any of you who are actually following my rome series i'm going to be completely upfront guys this new change will not kick in until part 71 which is a little bit annoying but to be honest i can't afford to go back and re-record all those parts again one because the campaign will change and two with the no man's sky update coming out that's the reason i wanted to record ahead because that's going to be quite a big event and there's going to be a lot of work to do around that and of course now this update's dropped which is kind of thrown all my plans all over the place anyway that's my problem not your problem guys but any of you guys follow the series apologies that this update will not kick in to part 71 or 72 i can't remember how many parts i did i literally recorded them all back to back over a quite a long period of time i think that's enough of me waffling on here i think what we're going to do now is start going through the patch notes now what i will say is that a big focus of this update is related to roster changes visual effects and be honest what i've seen is looking really good and i am very impressed and i'd like to give a big thank you to dresden and all the all you all the team who contributed to this i think you've done an absolutely fantastic job and i'll try and give you guys as much of a flavor of what they've been doing as possible so we're going to start at the top here and you can see i'm going to ignore the alexander sub mod bit there we will come to that in part three so the first thing on the list is the simbri are have been overhauled and they are now a playable faction now the Simbri start somewhere up round on the map where Denmark is and it's always been an area where it's always been a bit left out on, on from that perspective. So what, what the, the Vidiat Empera team have done 
is they've actually introduced this new faction that's play. It's this completely new roster overhaul. What we're going to do is I'm just going to give you guys a quick look at the, the roster. I think this is the right roster. Let me see. Yeah. You can see the starting position up here in Jutland. Um, this is a little bit of a historical overview. We're just going to open up. And one of the key features that really fascinated me with this, and I will come back to it in part two, I will show you the Simbri roster actually on the battle map screen. But what you will see is that there's quite a few naked warriors. And one of the interesting attributes they seem to have is guerrilla placement. I'm, I'm kind of tempted to play the Simbri because I like the idea of their guerrilla style warfare. I mean, even the spear infantry seem to go lightly dressed. Considering how cold it can be up around Jutland, I think they're pretty brave guys, actually. But I really like the artwork here. And I think that's it. I, I think we'll just skip to the cavalry. The one weak area in this roster is the cavalry. I think these are the only two cavalry units. And again, they all look a bit sparse like that, but I really like the artwork that's actually gone into this. And, and it looks the, the rosters look good as well. So that is the first bit. And then you can see the next one is the... Adriae have been completely overhauled. It says multiple new units, visual over oh, visual overhaul for all unit. I think this is the Adriae here. And again, we'll just have a quick look through. I mean, they do look visually different now. So I so say I'll, I'll just show you these the these units at the top. I really like the big shields, and again, the fact they're all different. I, I really like this here, and, and what they've actually got is now. Is some hoplite units so that they should be a stronger faction to play and to actually fight again i'm going to be very interested because in my rome campaign the adri are a fairly powerful faction it'd be very interesting to see whether they adopt the new unit or because it's an existing playthrough they will stick with the traditional uh, armies so moving on you, the next one is the medwi overhaul we see multiple new units ahead visual overhaul on um, for other units and for any of you guys on wondering what where the medway is now there is a bit of an issue in the fact that if you play the grand campaign they are they are shown as kush i think this is it you can see they're down south of egypt in this area in the nubian desert and they've got some pretty awesome units again like this is a faction i really fancy playing you've got these spear units here which they, they look good i really like the tops of these spears here i'm just going to skype down very quickly because it's the melee infantry that really look awesome. I mean, some of these axe guys and these these kind of, I think they've got short stabbing spears here. We've got some more here with axes. I mean, they're a very heavy axe type unit. You've got these ones here, shielded axemen as well. Yeah, just there. And I think these guys are medium infantry recruited for lesser nobility with shield. The troops are very dangerous. I mean, these guys have got some really great ability to hack through armor. So again, it could be really fun going up against, like, say, Egypt or even Rome with these units. I mean, they look pretty awesome. So that's the Midway. Now, Sparta and Pergamon have been given a, a, a visual overhaul. And it says here, all, all new visual overhaul for many units in these rosters, especially elite Selenic generals, are updated with appearance. So the roster remains the same. And I think Cam was responsible for doing the visuals on this. And again, I'm just going to give you guys a quick look at here. You can see Cam here, Cam here actually published the preview. And, and some of these units look really awesome. I mean, look at this, guys. I mean, who doesn't want to get in and fight with these units? Look, I mean, the difference in the shields. This is one feature of this update that's come across is that there's been a lot of work just done on individual shields i can't apologies i can't remember the name of the person who actually did it, it these units are going to look really unique and different here and you can see that, that there's lots of these units here because as i say there's a whole range down here so any of you guys who actually want to have a quick look at the lancers oh, i like my lancers yep or it's cavalry so and then of course down here we got the spartan units as well so let's have a quick look at the oh, Spartan use. Yeah, they look pretty good as well. Anyway, so that is the main visual change, and I would say that that is the big focus of this update. Now, moving down, it says miscellaneous unit changes. It says over 200 units redone in various rosters and bring them up to, up to date with newer assets and textures. Rosters redone including Italian, Arabian, Belgium, British, Celtic, Nepotian, Nomadic, Veneti, 
and various AOR units. So you can see, so even if you're not playing one of those overhauled factions, you may see some impacts on the, 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 some of the other units in the game. So moving on now, this is here. the next thing is they've introduced faction traits. These, these are the faction traits that you actually get when you start a new campaign. Um, again, I've, I've had a quick look through, but to be honest, I didn't really know the faction tra old faction traits, so I can't really point out the difference. But maybe in part two, I will give you guys a bit of a quick overview of that. Now, the next one down here is really interesting. And this is, it says, a new resource. It says, added amber to northern Germanic regions. And it is produced by the region effect of the spices and is fully trade. New amber trade route effect added to the various regions going south. It should now be possible to complete the, the own every resource economic victory condition. That's going to be very useful. When I loaded my Rome campaign, I actually went looking for the amber and I couldn't find it. So if you guys have got an existing campaign that this is loaded into, I don't think the amber resource is going to appear. But if any of you guys are curious to look at the where the amber is, if you start a campaign as the Swaby, the amber is one the next region up. It's part of the Swaby province, but it's one region up alongside where the Swaby starting location is. So that's going to be an interesting new resource to put in. I mean, it'd be interesting to see how... How well it is in fact it's a shame that i i won't be able to conquer that and see it in my rome campaign it says a new special cap capital for dacia capital has been added to i'm not even going to try and pronounce that new campaign only i haven't been able to look at that because the that city is not a starting position for one of the current playable factions so so you'd have to start as the get a and then expand and capture it and look at what the benefits for this new special capital is Moving on, you can see there's now some, been some small changes to the population system. To be honest, this is detail. I mean, it relates mainly to the first class. This is reduced overall immigration movement by all classes. Now, that is quite interesting because immigration can affect the strength of your regions, especially when you're building them up. That reduced could slow down new sit pop arriving in your city. Now, the edicts, I will try and show these to you in part two. The, the changes are quite small. And again, I've got the same problem, guys, because a lot of these edicts I don't actually use. So I don't really can't really say what the change is. So all I can do is take their word for it. I have checked the bread and games and it says to decrease food costs. I think they've reduced the food cost by two, increased the public order by two. Migration, I've never, ever used. Foreign customs increased public order bonus. That could be useful. I can't even remember actually even seeing a, a edict called foreign customs. I may, may need to look at that. Um, Romanization. Okay. I don't even remember seeing that as well. All increase in cultural conversion, adding buildings. Yes. Now, this is one that I, I do really like because if any of you guys have watched any of my series, you, you'll be aware that there's one block of technologies that I always avoid, and that is mili the military training technologies. Because I used to really hate that cost with the percentage of just researching that tech. And you can see what they've done now is they've decreased the upkeep negatives on military training technologies, increased the levy upkeep bonuses for final technologies, increased the ship technology bonus from military build some time. And I actually checked that in my Rome campaign. And I, offhand, I can't remember exactly. I think they it, before when you got to the really high military trainings, you were you were paying minus 2.5 i think even the net is high as three percent on your army upkeep that's now been dropped to i think around 1.5 but don't quote me on that guys because it could vary between factions because you've got to remember the tech trees are dependent on individual factions that's just my impression of the rome campaign now the next couple of sections i'm not really going to go into any really great detail because these are battle changes fixes, balancing changes fixes, and of course down here we've got a whole list of other fixes and bug releases. I'm, I'm just going to try and find the ones that really caught my attention. Oh, there's one here. War dogs buffed in assault rolls against light units. That is very interesting because I've, I've always found, compared to Attila, the war dogs were pretty weak in, in Rome too. There it says here, fixed incorrect mass assigned to many cavalry units. This caused some units to underperform compared to their overall charge and heavy appearance. 
So they've obviously readjusted the cavalry. Hopefully they won't have not adjusted too much of the cavalry that I'll be fighting in the future. So that is a quick overview of the patch notes. I'm just going to reiterate, guys, if you want to look at any of the great of this in greater detail, there will be a link in the video description that will bring you to this. And by all means, feel free to look at these previews. They are awesome and they're certainly worth a look. What I'm going to do now is we're just going to cut now into the second section, which will be a series of me showing you bits on the grand campaign, unit rosters, just to give you guys a little bit of a flavor for what what is in, in the game in a more visual sense. So I'll see you in a minute, guys. Welcome to part two of this video on the 1.25 update for Davidiette Impera. Before I talk about what we're doing in this part, you can just see the Alexander's shield in the background against the wallpaper for this start. Now, you will only get this backdrop if you subscribe to the Alexander campaign submod. And there's a good reason for seeing that, which I'll explain in part three. But in this part, what I want to do is first show you the, the starting traits for the Simbri, their starting location, and we'll go in and have a quick look on the campaign map for where they are and all that. The second one is that I will then load a Swaby campaign and we'll go in and I will show you the location of the Amber. And then just to round off this section, what we will do is go in into the custom battle and take a quick look at the full Simbri roster, the Adriai and the Kush or Medway rosters, just to get you guys so you can see the new the new thumbnails and maybe get a look at the stats. So first thing we're going to do is take a look at the Simbri starting location. They are actually classified as a Germanic tribe. They're here. You can see their starting location is up here in Jutland. They've got Terrors of the Night can always choose to fight night battles. Um, I mean, this adds more to what I was saying in part one, where their guerrilla deployment option, if they've got night battles, you can have some real fun battles of this. This is Warrior Society plus two public order for every war against neighboring factions. I think that's quite a common trait. And then specific to them, Celtic ties diplomatic bonus with Celtic factions. So though they're technically Germanic tribes, they're actually a Celtic uh, a faction. Fierce charge, increased charge bonus for all units. And I think that emphasizes the one of the strengths of the of the of the um, Simbri is that you've got to play a fairly aggressive battle strategy when you play it. And this seems to be one of the new traits. It says seed locked, reduced farming income, and which is in some ways is right because although they're on Jutland, their actual starting location is actually landlocked. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to click the start campaign just to show you what the start location looks like. Now there's no audio with the introduction. It's quite short, obviously, because this is a new faction. Life is hard in the extreme north. The land is being at premium and the sea surrounding your people. Winters are but have harsh realities to the population of your years. You earn to find more fertile and expensive lands. Can you bring them to the north of there? Of course, we've got the usual standard start. So we've got a nice starting location here. Let's move the army out. Well, we start with copper. That's a pretty good option there. Of course, the first thing you're going to need to do is get food up and running. So you won't be able to use the copper mine straight away until you've expanded. You have part of the furnum down here. Which is, hmm, from Flevum. It's a very interesting start. I mean, you're going to have to get aggressive quite quickly and get out and do something. Just have a quick look at the technology here. We can't really see. We'll, we'll have a quick look at Warrior Code. You can see there, see, they've adjusted this now so that with the Warrior code technology, you only get 0 0.5, 0 0.5. I don't know if that's a cumulative 1%. So it gets up to 2% there. But I think they've they've actually pushed up some of the extra benefit there. It says minus 12 recruitment costs for lower tier levy units or provinces. So that could be useful. But you can definitely get some good perks out of that. So let's have a quick look at what the recruitment is. You don't get a lot of recruitment here. You get a baggage train from the start. Germanic hunters, and if you, I don't know if you can see there, you got. It. So you don't really get a good starting roster, do you? Have a look at what we've got here. So we we got the cav route here. 
We've got some slingers. I'm really you're gonna to need to get a second. Ah, this is a better roster. So you get slingers on both sides, that's good. You, you, you can see here the impact of this guy. See the we weapons damage on these uh, these guys. So yeah, I mean, once you've got to here, so I think probably meeting ground would be the first step you need to do. Get some pretty good troops here. I mean, some of these guys for a, a, a tier two recruitment uh, will be quite handy to have around. Anyway, guys, that is the Simbri, and of course we're starting in the snow, which is fun. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quit out and come back as the Swaby just to show you the location of the Amber. And there's no point you me showing you all the, the steps in this. So I'll see you once I'm back in as the Swaby. So here, so here we are, guys. We're on the Swaby starting location. And you can see they start with Lipothorum. And the actual only region I found so far that's got Amber in is up here. This is part of the Swaby province. I moved my agent up here just so that you guys can get a good look at it. You can see it's got the amber symbol just there. And you can also see it on the, the main map here. There's amber worth 40 here. And of course I haven't unlocked this. So there could be some other amber around. But if any of you guys know any different, feel free to chuck it in the comments. But the impression I get from the release notes is that amber will flow down this way. As it says the southern trade route. So I'm assuming it will come down through here. I mean, I don't know whether this for base government. Let's have a quick look. From all local commerce and errors not on key trade routes benefit less from trade. Okay, so, when, so, so it's probably this uh, re uh, region that's on the key trade route. We're not. Anyway, guys, so that is the location of Amber if you want to know where it is and if you want to build to it. If I, mean, if I was playing the Swaby, my focus would be very much on getting out here, taking this as quickly as possible, because the the province of Swaby is a very useful area to take when you you want to get established. Once you've got that province under your control, not only do you secure your rear defence, but you can then start thinking about going south. And the addition of Amber now makes that even more worthwhile doing because it's obviously a unique resource and I'm rambling on guys. So, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quit back to the main menu and we'll just take a quick look at the, the new rosters. So I'll see you in a minute. Welcome to the custom battle map. Now, if any of you guys have noticed that the back screen has changed back to the normal Vidiette Impera screen. The reason for that is when I opened up the custom battle with the uh, Alexander campaign submod enabled I could not get the roster for the Simbri I could get the rest but I couldn't get the Simbri so what I've had to do is quit out um, turn the mod off or turn the submod off and then come back in again and now I've actually got the full roster I don't know if that is a potential issue or normal gameplay within the campaign but that's something you may need to think about so this is the Simbri roster you can see they've got quite a few naked warriors here. They obviously like flashing it about. And 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 I think this reflects the play style that you're going to have to play as the Simbri. You can see they've got some pretty impressive charge bonuses. And virtually all of them have good charge bonuses. And that might offset the fact that you've got only the two cavalry units, which aren't particularly that good. I mean, the medium horsemen, yeah. And I mean, the... Simbri light riders could be useful. I mean, they don't have that much ammunition. But more importantly, if I actually show you here, if we can get over here, you'll see that armor oh, moving. You've got guerrilla deployment, and this is a characteristic of a lot of the Simbri troops. I think it might even see even the general. Some of these generals. No, oh, this general doesn't. That's a bit of a thing. And of course, the, the more importantly, also they are resistant to cold. And you've got this thing here called Stalk. I've, I've actually never actually seen that trait before. I don't know if that's new. This unit can move in hidden, can can move hidden in any terrain. So, but the guerrilla deployment is going to be quite important, especially like if you look at some of these troops here. And you, again, you've got this hide and scrub in forest, hide in grass. So, so we've got these wolf warriors can literally be hidden in the middle of nowhere, and they've got guerrilla deployment. And campaign stealth. This unit can move around the campaign map without being seen. 
So again, could you mislead enemy armies by not seeing these units? So there's some very interesting... Actually, they've all got campaign stuff. So, I mean, there's all... I mean, could you build an ambush army with just some of these guys? I mean, that could be... That's an interesting thought. If you built a whole army of these units here that had campaign stealth, could you actually create an invisible army? And, and I have to admit, this is what really attracts me to maybe playing the Simbri. You could have some real fun with this. I mean, their, their, their missile troops aren't anything particularly well. I mean, 90... I mean, you know, I, I don't really feel anything particularly great about their missile units. So it's going to be very much an infantry army. I suppose the Simbri Noble Horsemen would have to be your main charge general, armor penetration. And again, I mean, of course, one of the downsides of this faction is going to be the fact that you're going to have very light armor. So going up against the heavily armored Romans and, say, the the Macedon, Plague, Egypt and the Sucalids could be interesting. So that is the roster for the Simbri. And um, what we're going to do now is just go down. And as I mentioned before, uh, Medway is actually Kush. And again, you can see the new thumbnails. You can almost see the new units by based on the thumbnails here. And they look pretty awesome. I mean, we got some, I think that M Moreau Royal Cavalry has been around for some time. You can see here we've got these um, Kushite painted warriors and the, the, the thing that interests me with these if you look on the right you will see the, the weapons damage and armor penetration I mean 36 com in combination with 30 yes they've got no armor but if you could get some rear charges in on with these guys into the back of heavily even heavily armored troops you could really do some damage I mean these guys are even more powerful look at that and these are macemen these are 41, 43, armor penetration 25. And I mean, 25, 30 is very high armor penetration. I mean, that these aren't quite so good, although these got weapon damage of 54. These are sealed swordsmen. Weapon damage 56. We've got, what about that then? Weapon, weapons that charge bonus 62, weapons damage 61, armor penetration 23. Well, these would be a pretty awesome late game unit. I mean, their spear front line's a bit weak, so you're probably going to need a, a Flanex type unit here. And none of them are particularly great, but you could probably live with that. Missile troops, again, don't really feel it. And of course, they've got elephants, they've got chariots. Not a big fan of chariots. Got some Ethiopian light cavalry, which could probably do some damage. Let's have a quick look here. Got some cat um, catathrax. Now they could be a handy unit to have to support your front line up here. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good, guys. Just to wind this section up, what we're going to do is have a look at the Adriai. And again, the first thing that strikes you is, is it's almost like the thumbnails have been reworked. You've got Illyrian Clubman. Again, there's some pretty good uh, weapons damage and armor penetration on these. In some ways, I don't really want to go up against these in my Rome campaign, actually. I mean, that weapons damage for light infantry is pretty good. I mean, they've got no real... Oh, they've got 20 armor. I mean, they don't have much armor penetration, but, but against um, light troops, they could be quite useful. I think there could be a bit of imbalancement there, guys. I mean, how can you have light infantry with weapons damage of 61 with... Um, Axeman with weapons damage of 43. I suppose I think these have got more um, armor penetration. See, these are 38, 62. So these guys are only just marginally better than the light infantry. Interesting. And these are the sicker bearers. They're not particularly that good. Uh, Illyrian Corsairs. Elite swordsman. See again. You see see the difference between that weapons damage sixty two armor penetration. Moving on, they got a range of spear infantry. Here, Theros spear infantry, hoplite spearmen. Of course, what they've also got is the uh, flanex units, which would be pretty useful in their own right as well. Although they've only got the one that actually make a pike flanex. The rest are 
we're going to be in hoplite but then again that's not too bad again we've got just the medium cavalry nothing particularly special there and i think that's just going to be about it so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to have to quit out of the application and reload the sub mod and i'll be back for part three where we will take a look at the new alexander campaign sub mod see you in a minute Welcome to the final part of this video where we're taking a look at the recent update for Davidi at Impera. In this section we are going to be looking at the Alexander campaign submod. So this is not part of the actual 1.25 update which I've been talking about in the previous two parts. This is almost a separate section in its own right. Now before we get into talking about the detail of this submod, I want to talk about something that's pretty important as I actually run into this problem and Dresden does address it in the forums where the submod is discussed. That is the fact that if you go into Steam and subscribe to this submod, it's quite easy to find. And this screen does not appear. And more importantly, if you come into here, you can see the Augustus campaign has now been replaced by Alexander. And you come in here and you get a single faction start. We'll talk a bit more about that. But if you do not see this screen, if you see the normal Augustus screen appear here, what what has actually happened is that the various submod components have been loaded in the wrong order. And what you've got to do is quit out, go to Steam, find your Rome 2 installation in the library, right click and open properties. And then in properties, go to beta. And then in the beta section, drop down, go back to the old loader because it, it seems to be an issue with the new loader that CA has introduced. And that's exactly what I had to do. I had to go enable the old loader. It came up and of course, remember to go in and into the actual mod and switch on the sub mod so that it actually does work. And what should happen then is that you will then get this screen up here. It's quite a spectacular screen actually. And more importantly, in here, you will see Alexander. Well, you will always see Alexander, even if you the with the new loader. So that kind of confuses you. But what you won't, will get is this screen here. That out of the way, guys, let's just get down to some of the detail in this sub mod. And I must admit, I, I, I'm i really tempted to have a go at this, but I'm not sure if I've got the time at the moment. This sub mod is the result of an idea that Dresden's been working on for some time. And... I really take my hat off to that guy because he, he's really got some vision of the way Davidiet Impera is going. Because, I mean, it'd been very easy just to say, right, we've done everything we've done. We're just going to do a lot of small releases over a period of time. Keep it ticking over. What he's actually done is he's, he's really gone out and introduced a new dimension to the game. Because what he's introducing is these char historically character-driven campaign sub mods and that and this first one is alexander now i'm not sure how accurate this is and whether these comments are a bit dated he did kind of hint that there's still a bit more work to be done on this sub mod but what i've seen so far looks pretty good pretty fresh well rounded and i'm even in this current state i'm i've had the time i've been inclined to do it hopefully this could be the first of a series of sub mods built around historical characters and i'm I'm quite l really looking forward to what's actually going on in that direction. Anyway, let's just get down to some of the more mundane details. As you can see, when you play this sub mod, you've only got the one option. You've got to play as Alexander, and he is obviously the leader of Macadon. There's some nice history here. I'm not going to go through it because this video is probably getting too long already. And you can see we've got the fact effectively the... Uh, Macadon, actually no, this is Alexander's traits, is it? So it's kind of been flipped around a little bit, isn't it? Oh, because this would be the Greek successor states, wouldn't it? So, so Alexander brings specific traits to the campaign: Greek pride plus ten percent morale during battles against the Persians. That's an interesting mechanic, which I will talk about once we get onto the campaign map. Strategist plus ten percent movement range for all armies. That's that could be very useful. And of course, the starting year is 335 BC, which is earlier than the 278 starting position for the Grand Campaign. And hard, Grand Difficulty, I probably would play on hard just so we can have some fun. 
And of course, as Mahgadon, their assimilators decreased public order penalties due to presence of foreign cultures. For less in pride, charge bonus to all cavalry units, ancient enemy, major diplomatic penalty with Persians. That goes to stand, stand the reason that if you're going to play this campaign, you're never going to make friends with the Persians. The idea is just to kind of take them, bash them up as much as possible. Have a quick look at the victory conditions. Control 70 settlements, even by direct ownership of client states. And looking at Egypt, Macedonia, Assyria. I presume that's Bactria. I've got no idea where that is. Thrake. So I would guess that the idea of this is to take us in the direction of recreating Alexander's empire. 1960, yeah, 75 no units. That's pretty good. I actually quite like that mosaic image there of Alexander and I think what we're going to do now guys is we can just jump straight in and take a look at the campaign there's some actually quite interesting wallpapers as this loads as well so here we are now there is no audio with the introduction and I'll just give you guys the potted version while he's flipping through basically he's telling us that we've got to get out here and take on the Persians fulfill the promise of his father and we get this very quick view of Babylon here, which is obviously the capital of Persia, which we won't be able to see once we actually go on the campaign map. And the final part of the story is that our immediate enemy is up here, the Thracians, which we've got to take on. So that's the overview over. This is after Philip's murder, many vassals rebelled and the new king. Others eventually capitulated. The Thracian tribes have held out against Alexander. So again, differently from the normal campaign, we've actually got to take a specific province, which is Thrake. Now, if any of you guys have ever played Macedon on the main campaign, Thrake is always the number one target after you've you've taken Larissa. But of course, with this start, you've actually got Pella, Larissa and Athens. So you've got a slightly more solid start than you would on the grand campaign. Because we've actually got three settlements. And I think diplomatically, yeah, we're military allies with Epirus, which is probably okay. I mean, just have a quick look around. These guys half like us. These guys hate us. I suppose Sparta, you could probably get on side. Be welcome. However, uh, yeah, speak I'm not going to do the usual dodges, but must accept, although my honor... yeah, probably get Sparta on side. We were probably even a view for an alliance actually sorry I, I know i should be playing guys but so what you would need to do is secure sparta so that you can concentrate on, on the, the thracians up here and can't take thrake so you'd have to well the first target would probably be up through there or through there anyway i don't want to get into too much detail on the game of course i don't know if we can actually see the persians out here so the Persians are the Acremenid Empire, because Babylon is about here. Now, as um, far as I know, some regions have been renamed. So it's looking around there. So we've actually got some indication of the extent. So it looks like Persia is roughly around here. So we would have to build a pretty big power base here straight away before we get going. Let's have a quick look at the comparative strengths. So they're saying that... Hmm. Well, we've got to check out here. Wow. <laughs> that could be fun. And Thracians, they really hate us. Yeah, so that would be the first initial challenge. Let's have a quick look. And this is got yeah, Alexander Osbalasus. That is the Greek name for Alexander. Uh, actually, so he's leading. He's leading the sacred squadron. Some good um, bronze shield pikemen, silver shields. What else could we recruit here? We've got fairly good recruitment. We've got Thessalian cavalry, Sarissa Lancers. I must admit, I always find Sarissa Lancers a little bit of a paper cannon, to be honest. They, they seem to 
go in, but they don't seem to last very well. We can get more bronze shield pikemen. Yeah. Cool. We've got some Thracian warriors as well. I really like my Thracian warriors. They've got Agarian axemen. Yeah. I mean, they could be quite useful. We've got, oh, we've got Cerulea Lancers over here. So you could probably build a pretty good army up here. We have a spy. Of course, we've got no spy. Oh, that's different. So the first thing you need to do is get a spy. Uh, well, wow. yeah, because you certainly would need to reconnaissance up here. Mm. Anyway, guys, I'm getting a bit distracted to stay on focus. And let's have a quick look at the edicts. Wealth and culture. And of course, there won't be any export food, mercenary negotiations, commercial stimulus. Yeah, I, I think I could really get into this campaign. So we've, got, we've got a trade route between there and the trade route with the, there. I suppose we could get a trade route there, get those on side, come up here, kick the, these guys here, the Thracian tribes. So it looks like some of these factions have been renamed to fit into the historical time period. Yeah, over and all, I, I think I could really get into this campaign. I mean, let's have a quick look at the research because we can't really see it very well. Industry settlement. So, naval measures, hoplite barracks. Let's have a quick look. So this would be 2.5 plus maximum. I mean, most of the research looks fairly standard. Essential contracts. Monumental architecture. Actually, I just noticed something here. Was it down here in... I'm sure I saw it in Athens, yeah. So the aqueducts are already open in, Af in Athens. Hmm. Oops, not, not that. I'm sure. I'm sure I saw improved irrigation there. Legal institutions. Water sluicing. Okay. Yeah, subterranean aqu aqueducts. So it's almost like Athens has already got this unlocked. That's interesting. Anyway, guys, I think that is going to be enough of an overview because obviously I don't want to get into play. I'm already half tempted to start playing already. Is going to be it for this quick introduction to this new sub mod. I think it's going to be quite an interesting challenge to play and I probably will play it eventually, but I'll probably wait till the... Rome campaign has made a bit more progress before we get into it. I think it'd be fun playing as Alexander the Great. Right, so this is where I'm going to leave it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it interesting. If you've got any questions, feel free to chuck them in the comments. I will try and answer them the best I can, but be aware that I'm new to this update. I haven't had any preview access to it or anything like that, so I may know just as much as you guys. So until next time, whatever you do, enjoy your gaming.